save it off. It's um, there's a big difference for me from I don't I don't think I need the microphone. Just can everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just there's a big difference between understanding or being able to integrate that that I don't know what to call it a con concept or a, a, a belief a truth um, to actually being in the experience of it. And I think for me there's still that. That's um, part of the, I guess, the journey that I'm still on, is being able to experience that, that unified field. Um, and I have maybe moments of it, but when I'm at work and, you know, there's this happening, that happening, and phones and people, and it's just, that's where I, it's, that's, I guess, the, one of the big challenges for me. Um, is being able to integrate that more into my whole beingness. And um, I don't know, does, is there any ways that you can, I mean, I'm working through the lessons, I'm, you know, so I'm doing the lessons, the, the miracles every day, and I guess it's just a process, but it still feels, I still feel like there's a, there's a big gap between Kind of, I perfectly understand what you what you're saying when you just said that, but actually being in that experience. Yes. Yeah. The, the journey is one of of letting the Holy Spirit exchange self concepts uh, from more tight, uh, restricted self concepts to more loose, expansive self concepts. So. No one goes from a, from a tiny or a small or a very tight, limited self-concept into the Christ. You have to like, op your, open your consciousness and let the Holy Spirit exchange more and more expansive self-concepts. And the way that this happens is with trust. You know, for example, in the parable of David, it was like, oh yeah, sentimentally, I would read books, watch movies, listen to music, and I would hear things that would feel sentimentally very beautiful. That wasn't my consistent experience. You know, I was, felt like I was in process and just opening. But I would be guided systematically and very practically to, to just ponder and question uh, what my beliefs were. What did I actually believe about everything? Uh, I mean, for example, I, I remember Early on, um, I had this talk with Jesus and I would say, well, I can see there's a lot of beliefs I need to question, but I have debts. Um, I don't believe that money grows on trees. I can just go out and harvest it from the, the fields. Uh, I think I have to work for that. And I started to say, and I, I looked at the whole ideas of careers, for example, and I could see that they were very time-based, mm -hmm. the idea of having a career. And so that's where Jesus started with me, was just beginning to start with this idea of a career. Like, he was saying, are you willing to, be, to start to question this idea of stringing together a series of jobs and experiences over the timeline and calling that your life? Uh, and I said, yes, I'm willing to, to at least take a look at that. I said, I'm not willing to question the concept of job uh, because I have debts. And I just, I don't know how the, the money would come in. I mean, it's just not, I'm not planning to sit there and just meditate and, and have it show up in piles and piles. And so there were things that I, I certainly wasn't willing to question at that point, but I was able to look at the idea of stringing all these jobs together kind of in a linear way. And it's the same with us, with many beliefs around relationships and many different beliefs. That, that there's a loosening that occurs as we transfer the training, as we're able to take, for example, those workbook lessons that you're working on, and we're able to move through them and move through each day and, and carry that lesson forward and transfer it more and more to situations that, that confront us, whether it's at work or in our relationships or family situations or whatever. And there's a loosening of our self-concept. So, as I went along, I saw myself more as a spiritual seeker uh, and less as 
David, you know, the, the brother, David the son, David the United States citizen, you know, all those things that were part of the self-concept started to loosen gradually. And then I, I saw myself more as a seeker who would go and visit teachers and people to talk with them, to open my heart up and listen to their ideas and to have experiences uh, while I was doing my travels, you know, to, that would start to show me that I was, I was more than I thought I was, that I was taken care of. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you've gone through, in the last two or three years, you've gone through a lot of this same process. Mm -hmm. you want to share a little bit about how you've been transferring that? Yeah, well, uh, it's like David, he says, be, like being very honest with yourself and just see like as soon as you see something, like as, like things that I felt, um, like with food is one example. Um, if I feel drawn to something, I like one time I felt like a lot of ice cream, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll just buy loads of ice cream. So I bought loads of ice cream, <laughs> and I ate ice cream, and I ate and I ate, and I was like, hmm. After some time of doing that, I was just, when I was eating it, I was like, well, I don't really want this, but I am eating it. So that was like the first step for me. And then I just kept on doing it, like for some time. I ate and I noticed that I, would, I don't really want this. And I just felt that, okay, that's okay. So then I came to the point where I saw, oh, I have the thought of going to get an ice cream, but I know that I don't want it. <laughs> so that was like the loosening of it that I could see that, oh, I get the thought there, and that is just the distraction from keeping me away of something else that I need to let go of. That it's some process coming up in me now, and I just want to distract myself from that. Or as of, of course, just being in the silence and just being, which we truly are. So it's like like seeing that that was one of the distractions of, of this world that I built up in my mind, and that was distracting me from this. So that was just allowing myself, being very gentle, like okay, I feel like ice cream. I know I know that this is a craving, but it's okay, and just being very gentle with that. Is that what you would think all addictions are? Is a distraction? Yeah, I asked the Holy Spirit one time about addictions. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit said, you have but one addiction, and that is judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was like, wow, I mean, anything that the Holy Spirit tells me that's simple, you know, <laughs> thank you, that, because you know how the mind wants to get into analyzing and breaking things apart and figuring things out. And so we could say that, that even things that seem like physical addictions, like smoking addictions or eating addictions or sex addictions or alcohol addictions and those kind of things that seem to be very physical, that those are maybe just seem to be a little more concretized or a little more solid, but, but that underneath that, why does someone go to the alcohol or the drugs or whatever if they don't feel it's really a sense of emptiness, like there's a, a lack, a hole inside and they want to fill it up and they're just trying to fill it up in the best way and the only available way that they know uh, that's in their awareness. And so you could say that, that um, I would say judgment is the core addiction that if you really want to be free of addiction completely, that's why Jesus said, judge not, uh, in the Beatitudes. And if you really want to even be a little more fine with it, it gets back to what I opened our conference here with, the retreat here, <coughs> that when you find yourself thinking about the future, or thinking about the past, that's even a more subtle form of defining what judgment is. Because a lot of times we think of judgment as just, it's condemnation, 